All right, guys, before we get started, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video if you dig it. It's been a while since I've had an N4 uh, on the channel, and uh, this one's a very special N4. Uh, this is one that I've been looking for for a long time, uh, and this is a 93 Paduke. And it was made later in 93, and it was made out of this very special piece of wood. As you can tell, it's an amazing piece of Paduke. Um, it's got some just amazing grain, amazing lines, and the lighting in here does not do it justice. Uh, check out my uh, stories here on uh, YouTube. I've got one on there where I've got this thing in the light where you can actually see uh, the movement in the wood grain in the light. It almost looks like a holographic, you know, sticker from like the 80s. Uh, you can, it just kind of moves with the light and it's really awesome and a really rare piece of wood. Luckily, I've become friends with a lot of people uh, that used to work for Washburn. A couple of guys that used to work in their wood shop there. And yeah, if you had an early 93 uh, Paduke, by now they're very, very brown looking. Um but this piece of Paduke is kind of more of a tan, brown, straight, you know, from when it was new. Uh, if you typically take a Paduke guitar and pop the uh, pickups out of it or the back plate, normally it'd be kind of like a pinkish red up underneath there, but that's not the case with this one. It's the exact same color front to back. Uh, this Paduke is a little bit lighter than your typical Paduke uh, in 4 and uh, like I said, it's just an amazing piece of wood that they made this thing out of. It's got an ebony fretboard. Uh, no fretware at all. The guy that owned this thing uh, bought it new in 93, kept it in his house, and never gigged with it, never took it out of his house. The only thing we had to do was some minor fret work to it in a setup. And it sounds phenomenal, uh, plays phenomenal. And you guys probably know from some comments that I've made before these 93 to 97 Grover Jackson N4s are like my favorite model because to me they feel like they're a little bit thicker uh, and uh, the body edges are not as rolled off as some other years the other thing is the neck joints are just super tight there's just no play in them at all and you don't have any problems out of these. They are just a military issue in four, and they're they're great. Um, they do have these uh, Washburn branded uh, Schaller Shaler uh, uh, bridges on them, which is the same company that makes Floyd Roses. Now they're all the same. These have a really thick base plate on them, and they sound great. They perform great. No issues at all with that bridge. I know some people swap them out for original Floyd Roses, but I wouldn't. It's it's great. Of course, it's got the Made in the USA like you see on like a Davies. Uh, but, you know, Grover Jackson took over everything, you know, in about 92, 93. And they really kind of revamped the N4 and uh, changed some things on it. And I really like this model in particular. This version of the N4 is like one of my favorites. So let's flip it around so you can see the back. It's got some amazing wood grain on the back too. Look at that. Just a killer. Look at the grain on this thing. Uh, so my buddies that used to work at Washburn, we were going back and forth for the last week trying to determine if this was really Paduke uh, or if it's something that they just thought looked like Paduke and put it on there because it really doesn't have that reddish orange to it like Paduke normally has. Uh, it's more of a tan, and then it got it's kind of a wood type thing. So it's it's got a real mahogany look to it up close, and a lot of mahogany type grain to it. So, but you you know you never know where they get this wood from. The newer Padukes that they make these days are made out of some kind of pinkish red wood that never turns brown and bleeds on your hands, and it's just junk compared to this. So uh, yeah, if you're going to get a Paduke, make sure you get an older one. These newer ones that they're putting out, I, don't, I just don't like that whole reddish pink look. It just looks ridiculous. And from what I've seen, people have owned those things for like five years and they never turn darker or brown or whatever. So, yeah. But yeah, you can kind of see the grain in this one. And it's just really, really awesome. Um, the only other thing that I had to do with this one was someone had Nuno autograph the back of it right here. 
uh, which would have been cool. I mean, if you got if you have him autograph a guitar with a sharpie, you really don't have to put anything over top of it. This guy took a like clear spray paint and just went right on the back of it to cover it, and it had this clear all over the back of it and a big wad over over the uh, the 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 signature. And you know, I'm not an autograph collector. I could care less if somebody signed a guitar. Personally, if I'm going to have him sign a guitar, I'm going to have him sign it right up there. And uh, I plan on going to one of the uh, stops on the the tour that they're on right now, probably down in Florida here in a couple months. And I'm going to have him sign the back of the headstock on this one. Uh, so I had no problem removing the that clear that the guy sprayed on the back of it and uh, the signature because just my, my my opinion, if you're going to have him sign a guitar, don't have him sign the body of the guitar. It looks so terrible. And if you're a professional musician and you're actually out playing somewhere, how silly does it look if you got somebody's autograph on the front of your guitar? But, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, but, yeah, it's got the uh, back plates that they started in 93. A lot of people don't like the skinny uh, trim cover and, uh, you know, trim hole that they have in there the cavity is a lot smaller on these and i actually prefer that you know my opinion is the more wood the better um but you know these guitars even if you have one in alder have some some good weight to them they were the custom shop back then was just building some amazing guitars and like i said they have a little bit more wood to them than your typical n4 so uh seymour duncan 59 in the neck uh bill lawrence usa um that's a uh, 500, L500. Not sure if it's an XL because it's, you know, they kind of just used a lot of different Bill Lawrence pickups back in the day. You might have an XL, you might just have an L, and you can tell a difference. Uh, you know, this one has kind of the same output as a guitar that has about 13K, you know, ohms coming out of it. Uh, and then you, you'll see some that are like, sound like they have 16. They're just really, really super... Uh, loud and harsh this one sounds great it's probably one of the better ones that i've had uh and it has one of those i think it has just a regular 500 l in it or a l500 um because it's it doesn't have a crazy amount of gain it's got like just right perfect gain so yeah look at the grain on this thing but like i said check out the story that i posted on this thing so you can see how it moves in the light it's very similar to like koa or sapelli you know, when you get it in the light, it kind of moves around and it looks really awesome and really cool. But make sure that you go check out that story. It's on my, if you just go to my uh, channel and click stories, it's going to have that one on there. I just posted it last night just to kind of show the wood grain off on this thing. But yeah, I love these things. They are just so tight and so killer. I plan on keeping this one. This one's mine. I know that I sell a lot of these too collectors uh, a lot of times i'll get a davies and i'll fix it up and i'll sell it to a collector and most of the time i'm selling it to a collector because they're paying me thousands more than what i paid for it um i did steal this one and uh don't not really going to go into the specifics of where i got it uh but i did buy it online uh from a music store let's just put it that way and uh i did steal it for what it was what it what it is and um uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to N4s, you've got the Davies, which is, you know, kind of the the holy grail of N4s. And then you have the uh, 20th anniversaries that they made. Those bring about six to eight grand, uh, depending on, you know, how desperate somebody wants one. Uh, and then after that, to me, the 93 Padukes are next in line as far as rarity and N4s. They made a bunch of weird ones over the over the years but you know a lot of different painted ones and flame tops and all that stuff but those typically the ones that are painted or have a bunch of clear on them they don't sound right they don't sound like an n4 and i just read in an interview with uh, nuno earlier this week where he said you know he tried this guitar painted and it didn't sound right so and i have to agree with him that's the great thing about an n4 is you know not having any paint on it I will tell you this Paduke sounds uh, a lot darker and fuller than the uh, Alder. The Alder is a lot snappier and brighter. So yeah, this thing sounds phenomenal. It plays great. Uh, and I really dig the setup on these things. You know, the 
Uh, you can kind of see the action on this one is just stupid low. My tech did an amazing job setting this one up. And yeah, I can set up a guitar, but I'm telling you, this guy, when you get back one back from him, the action is perfect. It ain't too low. It ain't too high. It is absolutely perfect. And he is just a master of uh, finding frets that are too high and making sure the frets are level and doing an amazing fret leveling job and uh, charges, you know, fair prices too. So uh, I can set up a guitar and it's going to play great, but I can take one to him and when he gets done with it, it's just going to be phenomenal. So that's why I invested in him fixing this thing up. Uh, and like I said, only thing we had to do was some minor fret work. We got some uh, fret ends uh, filed down that were sticking out just a little bit because, you know, the neck has shrunk over the years. But like I said, some guy just kept this one in his house. It was not a, uh, a player's guitar. It never left the house. I mean, so it's in a practically brand new shape. And uh, yeah, so... I've talked to my buddies that worked at Washburn at the time, and uh, one of them specifically remembers the wood that this guitar was made out of, and, you know, they said that this was not the normal Paduke that they put out there. They made a, a couple of them out of this Paduke, and you'll see some of these Padukes later on, like 96 or so, that will have be lighter, and it will be striped like this. Uh, but not to this extreme where it's got dark and light and to the point where it's like flamed, where if you move it in the light, it looks like the wood's moving. You know, this, uh, this is a totally different level. Uh, and from what they were telling me, they made just a couple of guitars out of this bit, one big piece of wood that Grover Jackson acquired towards the end of, uh, 93. So anyway, hope everybody digs the video. Really excited to have another N4. And uh, you can check this thing out right here. Uh, just a beautiful Paducah in four. Uh, I'm going to make some, some videos of me playing it. Uh, you guys know I rarely do that because I'm a singer by trade and I can just play a little bit of guitar. Uh, but uh, I'm going to post a, some videos later on playing this guitar to the best of my ability. Right now I've got a smash thumb, which kind of makes that difficult. Uh, but appreciate everybody tuning in. And we'll see you next time.